Okay, in this video I'm going to work through um, solving a reduction of this expression which represents um, the prime numbers in a 4-bit unsigned integer. Okay, so we are, there are 6, uh, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11 and 13. A, B, C just represent the bit positions. Um, not A means bit 3 is off. A means bit 3 is on. <clears throat> so we, we can solve this using the Carnot map and it's really quick, but we can actually um, solve this using Boolean algebra as well. And it's just a matter of refactoring, um, simplification that way. And we tend to use distribution rule, um, absorption rule, and then the, the, the simple um, uh, or and and rules of opposite values and things like that and we'll we'll be able to reduce this but it's something that you get better at over time like any sort of algebraic substitution work so first off what we're going to do um, we're just going to pick some ex sub expressions here um, some terms that look like they're similar or they change or they're different in like one element so if we look at this one here we've got a b c D with not A, not B, and we've also got not A, B, C, D. So this one and this one are the same apart from the B toggles. So what we can do is we can pull out the common factor, which is going to be not A, C and D, and then we and that with, so just it's just like factorising, so we've got not B or B. Now, that gets us a way of getting rid of two terms because not b or b is actually one. So if you just want to think about that, you've got if you've got a naught and a one, it's one. If you've got a one and a naught, it's one. Okay, so we're going to just get rid of that term completely. So we get left with not a c d. Okay, so when I'm doing these, I tend to write the whole thing out again. Um, so that I know where I'm at and I can see it easier. So not A, B, C, not D. Um, <clears throat> and then I'm going to pull, I've got a gap there, so I'm going to put this one in there. It doesn't matter as long as you don't mess it up. Um, make that an R. Uh, and then that leaves the other two to be pulled down. I'll zoom in in a sec. Uh, a, B, C, D. So we've done one distributive law and a general absorption, or general or uh, monkeying about. Okay, so let's, let's zoom in a little bit more. Right, let's see where we can go next. So <clears throat> looking again, um, if I look at this one, I've got not A, B, not C, D. So we've got like not, yes, not, yes. Here we've got A, B, not C, D. So this is the same as this apart from the A this time. So I'm going to use the distributive law and I'm going to pull these two terms together. So the common factor you can see looking at the end, B, C, D. So B, not C, D. In the brackets we've got not A or A. So again, we're going to reduce this to 1 because we're all in complementary values and that's always going to give you a 1. So that leaves us with B, not C, D. So let's <coughs> write down the expression as is now. So we've got, still got this big one at the start, which is not B, A, and not D. Um, and we've got this term still, not A, C, D. Uh, and then we've got this one remaining because we've just messed about with those two. So we've got it, got it down to four terms now from six. But we've still got a lot of inputs. <clears throat> so let's see what else we can do. So looking at these, these are very dissimilar, these two four input terms. But what you've got is the power of the absorption rule. So the absorption rule kicks in now. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the other terms 
um, four and three input terms and see if there's any commonality with those. Okay, so looking at this one, we've got not A, C, D. So if I look along, we've got a C, D here. But obviously this one's got four terms, but that doesn't matter. We've got a common factor. So we're going to look at these two. Use the distributive law again. So we're going to say C, D is the common. Then in the brackets, we've got not A or A, not B. Now this is an absorption rule. So where we've got something outside, odd, with something the opposite inside and with something, we can use the absorption rule to reduce that down to two terms. Okay. So in this case, <coughs> what that becomes is the thing on the outside, odd with the thing that was and the opposite of. The, the A becomes irrelevant. So this term then becomes C, D, not A, or not B. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute that back out. So I'm actually going to write that out. And I'm going to keep it in alphabetical order because that sort of like keeps my head on straight. So I'm going to rewrite that so it becomes that. So that now leaves us with not A, not B, C, not B. D. And then we've got this one <coughs> left. B, not C, D. So we're down to four terms. We've got rid of, we've got one that's still got four inputs. So let's see if there's any commonality left in the expression. So let's have a look at this one. So we've got not A, B, not C, uh, not A, not B, C, not D. Uh, now looking along the lines, uh, what have we got? We've got not A, we've got not A there. There aren't any A's in the other one, so let's, have a look. let's concentrate on this one. C is similar, D isn't, and there's no B in that. But we have got not A, C. So let's pull these two together using distributive law. So we're going to say not A, C on the outside, which leaves us with B, not D, not or D. So again, what we've got, by doing the distribution, we've isolated um, an expression that we can now use the absorption rule on again. So what we're going to look at is we're going to say, right, okay, we've got D or the opposite and something. It doesn't matter what the something is. So that becomes not B or D. So that's the absorption one of the absorption rules, there are four. Okay, so I'm going to expand this back out. I'll try and keep it alphabetically. So I'm going to redistribute. So that's not B, C, or not A, C, D. <coughs> and then that just leaves these other terms. That's not B, C, D, and B, C, D. That's as far as I can take that. And if we were to quickly do the Carnot map for this expression, which I'm going to do, so that's me. That's my final answer. I can't actually reduce it anymore. They're too disparate. I could rearrange it, but I can't actually get any more terms out of it. So I'm just going to do a K map for the original input just to prove. So it was four inputs. So I need a four by four square to do the K map. The world's worst grid. That looks good enough. Um, so I'm going to do A, B along the top, C, D down. I'm going to directly write my A's and B's and my not A's and my not B's. Right, I've got to follow a grey code, so I can only change one item each time. If you don't do that, you will break the Carnot map and it just will not work. <clears throat> okay, so you can double check. So I've got like A, A, not A, not A. So these are two checks I've got to make, and I've got a B and a B, and I've got a not B and a B. So I've got the right numbers of nots and normals, but now I need to make sure that only one changes. So I've got A, B, then B changed, then A changed, B stayed the same, then B changed back to B, A stayed the same. So yeah. So for going down, what I'm going to do, so that I don't even have to think about it, I'm just going to mimic what I've already double checked. Well, not literally, which is what I was doing there. Um, so I've got C, not D, 
not C, not D, and then not C, D. So that represents um, my logic layout. So my expression right from the start, I'm just going to grab that and copy paste it down because I want, I don't think I grabbed that properly. Let me grab it a little bit better. So I'm going to just copy that and scroll back down to my K-Mat. I'll just put it at the bottom down here so I can see. Oh, that was a awful. Let's um, paste it there and then move it into a correct position. This is terrible sometimes. Oh, I can see what I'm doing. Right. Okay, so I'm just going to go turn by turn and I'm going to put a marker in. I'm just going to put a 1 in the K-Map at that location. Because these are all four term inputs, there's just going to be one cell that I fill in each time. So all I've got to do is find the column and then the intersecting row. So I've got not A, not B, which is this column. And then I want C, not D. So C, not D is there, so it must be uh, there. Let's put the pen back on. Right, so that's that one. Uh, and then I've got not A, not B again, so this column. And I want C, D, which is the top row. So just ticking the ones off that I've done, and then I've got not A, B, which is this right hand column, and then not C, D, which is right down at the bottom. Then I've got not A, B, so it's this column again, and then C, D. Then I've got A, not B, which is this column, C, D. Tick that, and then I've got A, B, C, not D, so that's down there. Okay, so that's so I've got six terms with four inputs each so I should have six elements in my Carnot map right so now my next job is to do overlapping so I'll get a color pen on this biggest is best okay so I initially I'll start looking I think well there's three connected there there's two connected there I can't have threes it's got to be powers of two um, so that's no good to me um, but what you've got to always remember is wrapping. Okay, so if you look at these, these look like they're isolated. But they're not, because if I just go left a little bit, you've got to remember that um, a K-map is on a sphere. So the top and bottom and the left and right wrap round and meet. We just visualize it as a 2D thing. So I could actually do a pairing here. So I can wrap round and generate a pair. Let's do the obvious pair that's up here. So I don't try and work out what the expressions are, I'm just doing shapes. And then I've got this three. So <clears throat> I've got this pair in here. I just double check, make sure there's nothing down here for me to join to when I wrap. So I've got a pair here. And I've got potentially a pair here. So I could over up. Over, overlap these two. It doesn't matter if you've overlapped twice. The overlapping is okay if that makes for a bigger shape. But actually, I could overlap this way. So I could say, right, well, actually, look, if I go that way, I can overlap with that one. What that means is there are two solutions to the reduction of this um, expression. And actually, when we were doing the logic, decisions that I made earlier on steered me to the expression I got in the end and I could have taken a different um, bit of distribution and I would have got a slightly different expression it doesn't mean one of them's wrong it just means they're logically equivalent okay so we've got all there's no orphaned ones in the K map we've got the biggest we could uh, circle so we've managed to do twos couldn't we there was no fours in there unfortunately so now what we're going to do is we're going to just look at each one of these mappings and we're going to work out what the expression is. So I'm going to do this one first. Right, so this one overlaps this way. So I tend to do the column first. Right, so we've got a column. Because it's in a single column, the values of uh, A and B don't change. So we've ended up with not A and B. But we're across multiple rows. So this is where the skill in interpreting the K-map comes in. So on this row, we've got C, D. But on this row of the mapping, we've got not C, D. So C changes. So that basically means it doesn't matter whether C is normal or not. 
but the D does matter. So the C value gets dropped because it changes. It's the ones that remain constant that we keep. Right, let's have a look at this one. So I'll do it here. So going horizontally, we've got not A, B, but here we've got A, B. So A changes, B stays the same. So we keep the B. Because it's in a row, we've got not C, D. Okay, they're constant. They don't change along a row. Right, let's have a go at this one. So we've got <coughs> a column. So we've got not A, not B. And obviously it doesn't change because it's in a single column. So we keep those two values. They're relevant. But when we go vertically, we can see we've got C, D and C, not D. So D changes. We've got a D and a not D. So actually it doesn't matter. So we keep the C, the one that remains constant. Right, now the final term is this one. Um, we've got A, not B, and then we've got not A, not B. So the not B stays, but the A changes. So the A changes, so it's irrelevant, so we discard it. And then looking at the CD input, it's on one single row, so it's C, D. So there are four terms. Okay, so what I need to do now is put that together. So I'm saying, and remember this was P is equivalent to, so I've got A, uh, not A, B, D, and I just join them with an OR. I've got not B, C, D, and I've got not A, not B, C, and then finally I've got B, not C, D. So if we look at the Boolean algebra version we've got. So again, I should have, because my original question said um, P is equivalent to, I should have really framed my answer that way. Don't know how picky the examples are going to be, but they may be that picky. Um, and technically they should be. You should lose a mark for not forming the expression properly, but A. Hey. Um, right, so let's just see what we've got. So we've got um, not A, B, D. Now I can't see that in the expression but not a b d was this one where i had a choice okay so let's just we'll come back to that one in a set when i've gone through so so this one will is, is where we the choice came in right not b c d is there uh not a not b c is there uh b not c d is there. You can see how much quicker the K-map was, but you can't always do a K-map um, when you've got expressions. If you've got some like um, NAND or NOR logic in there, it, it's, I don't know whether you can do it. I've never even tried to do it on a K-map. You probably can do it, but it means you're monkeying about from the basic rules. Right, so the ones that we've got a mismatch with are these two. So we've got the right answer, but we've got a different answer. So we've got the same logical um, output outcome but we've got different ways of getting to it so i got abd uh, not abd from the carnot map but my boolean algebra got not acd so let's have a look what this if we'd have chosen this other pairing so we'd still covered all the ones in the carnot map let's just look to see what the expression that would have generated so we've got not a not b not a B. So B changed, so it's irrelevant. A remained constant, so we've got not A. And then going, because it's horizontal, we've got CD. So if you look, that is the equivalent. So we could have got the exact same expression, just because we made a choice, we got a slightly different expression, but they are logically equivalent. Okay, and that's what that shows. So K maps are quick. So if you've got an expression that you can put into a K-map, it's relatively quicker, but there isn't anything you can't do that you can do on a K-map that you can do in Boolean algebra. And Boolean algebra is more flexible, okay? Slightly tricky. You can go down dead ends, um, just like you can with normal algebraic um, simplifications. You can actually choose something that like, doesn't get you to where you want and you have to like undo and think about different methods but there you go so there's a nice little circuit that if you feed it with a four bit counter you can make it light up an LED to say that is a prime number 
not very useful, but it just shows you the power of building things in circuits rather than always producing software.